Hi, and welcome to another Excel demo with Rich Kerr. In this scenario, we're going to take a look at the stocks data type functionality in Excel. Now, you should have this capability if you've got the most recent updates to Excel or Office 365. Uh, so here's what we can do with this. It's pretty powerful stuff. I've got a list of company names in column A, and I'd like to retrieve some information about the firms, maybe uh, their 52-week high trading uh, price, or maybe uh, how many employees they have, or when the company was founded. And a lot of that information can be founded uh, with data sources online from, say, Google Finance or Yahoo Finance, but uh, it requires a lot of coding to pull that data in from a, from a web stream like that, and that can change, and it can, it can be modified by the providers of that information in ways that will break any sort of scripts or code that you write, and I've, I've had that experience. Uh, but now with the stocks data type, it's so much simpler and easy to do. The first thing you'll want to do is select the range of cells containing the company names and then go to the data tab of your ribbon and choose stocks in this data types section of the ribbon. It'll then try to convert the companies that you've got listed into uh, the representation of their entities as, as uh, public firms or publicly traded companies. So we've got the list of firms and we now have this little icon in each one of the cells right so if I click the little symbol there next to Honda or any one of these you get a little pop-up info card that gives us more information about that company so we can see uh, the price the most recent price at close uh, we can see for example what exchange it's traded on uh, we can see the 52 week high 52 week low Really powerful stuff, a market cap, a description, the year incorporated, the address of the headquarters. I mean, just really interesting that this stuff is available so quickly uh, simply by labeling the data as the stock data type. What's even more compelling, in my opinion, is the ability to use those attributes of the stock data type in a formula. So I'm going to go to cell B1, and I'll do, say, um, year founded right and so I'll start like any other formula we know that formulas in Excel begin with the equal sign and I'll reference cell A2 but because the value in A2 has been marked as a stock data type we now have this drop down list of attributes that we can incorporate into our spreadsheet formulas So if I kinda of scroll through you'll see things like 52 week high or what currency is it traded in? What exchange is it on? How many employees? Pretty powerful. So I'm going to scroll down until I find uh, Year Incorporated. Now you'll notice if the attribute has a space in the name, these brackets are part of how the syntax must, must be used. Uh, but if there's no space, you don't need these brackets. So I'll sit my, hit my Enter key, and we can see that Ford was founded in 1919. And I can now double-click to fill that down. Now, interestingly, we couldn't retrieve the value for Audi's uh, uh, founded year. So I'm going to do a traditional way of avoiding these sort of uh, error messages that Excel likes to kick out when it can't resolve your formulas. I'm going to use the if error function, which I'm sure you guys have seen before. If error lets you preempt Excel's normal error values with your own. So we say if error, open paren then the value we want returned from this initial formula we created, but then you can say comma, and then the value if error, I'll simply say uh, unknown. In other words, if the A2.year incorporated form formula cannot retrieve a value, we just want to say unknown instead of pound sign field. So when I fill that down, we can see that we can't get it for Audi. Let's look at a couple more data points. So I'm going to go to cell C1, and we'll do, say, 52-week um, high. Okay, so I want to know how high did this stock trade at over the past few uh, of the past past year. So we'll do equals A2, and what do you know? There's 52-week high right there. I'll just hit Tab to put that in place. Hit my Enter key and it pulls back the 52-week high, $10.56 for Ford, and we'll fill that down. And, of course, it, it was able to actually retrieve that data uh, for Audi. Okay. 
Now, another thing that's kind of interesting is because we're using the U.S. dollar symbol here, this, in fact, may be the trade price in another currency. In fact, we're getting, a, we're getting an indication that could be a problem here. We see that it says the number format applied to the cell may be misleading. So let's see if we can figure out uh, what, what currency is being used here. So I'm going to type the heading currency. And uh, we'll say equals A2 dot uh, currency. And now we're told that for Ford, Tesla, and Honda, those are U.S. dollars, but this is euros. That's pretty powerful stuff, too, because then you could create a formula to change the formatting uh, in column C to match the currency over here. Now, maybe we'll do that in another video, but for now, I could just do it manually, right? I can see that it's euros, so I'll come here and simply set it uh, to euros. There we go. So now we have euros there, uh, and it's now not giving me the error message that we saw at first. So this is the stocks data type option that you can now find in Excel to pull in data about various companies that you might be uh, using in your spreadsheets. So thanks for tuning in, guys. I haven't done a video in quite a while. This is one of my, my this is my most recent one. So uh, check back soon. I'll be doing a lot more over the next several days. So again, I appreciate your attention. Come back soon for more Excel demos with Rich Kerr. Have a productive day.